Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Angel Villar and I am a Network and Security Engineer at VMware. Under the name Security at Your Service, I am releasing a series of five videos that will cover the NSX security model, how the distributed firewall works and how it helps better protect your infrastructure. This is the first video of the series on which we will go over a bit of theory to set the basis of what we will see later and which we will finish with two short demos to help better understanding several NSX key concepts. On the second video we will see how to achieve micro segmentation in a data center and we will see how powerful and granular the NSX security model is allowing us to keep control and to filter any traffic even inside one IP subnet. On the third video we will see how to expand the, that micro segmentation concept across data centers and also how policies keep being enforced when VMs migrate from one data center to the other. Then on video number four we will see how to automate the deployment of network and security and the benefits it provides and finally, on video number 5, we will see a bit of operations and the visibility of traffic you get with NSX. But before we get into details, let's have a look at the recent Garner Magic Quadrant for Data Center Networking. For the third year in a row, VMware is the only software vendor appearing on this quadrant. We keep being the player with the most innovative vision and we keep moving upwards towards the leader quadrant. These are great achievements for us since we are competing with traditional networking vendors that make multi-million dollar revenues on hardware devices while for VMware only NSX sales count. And not only that but also as you can see on the screen Garner literally states that NSX is the leader of the sales and production deployments of any SDM platform in the market. NSX is widely deployed across VMware install base which definitely means NSX is widely deployed and also it has a deep feature set and a proven track record of reliability which is really important because we are talking here about production deployments and not about test of development deployments. And finally, the NSX micro segmentation model is an innovative mechanism to provide intra data center security in a cost effective and scalable manner. And it's not just Gartner, but the whole industry keeps acknowledging the value of NSX. For example, we have also won the 2016 SDM Best of Interop Award in Las Vegas this year. All that said, let's move into the contents of this first video on which we will see an introduction to the NSX security model and the distributed firewall. If we look at what happens in a traditional security model, the problem is that security can only be enforced when traffic goes from one IP subnet to the other IP subnet, and there is no way to enforce security inside each of these IP subnets. So at the end of the day, organizations do not apply the security model they would like, they have to apply the security model they can, which is tied to the network topology, lacks flexibility, and doesn't have control of what's going on inside each IP subnet. To solve these issues, what NSX proposes is a security model that breaks free from infrastructure. So you can finally have security at your service, defining a model that aligns to your needs, which is easily automated and very flexible, and which increases the security levels by building a zero trust model, which allows you to block any traffic that should not be there in your data center. And why NSX can do that? Because it sits at the core of the virtualization environment. It sits inside the hypervisor. On the screen, we have a physical server connected to the data center network, which is named external network, on top of which we have the VDS, which is the virtual network, and this could be either VLAN or VXLAN networks. Over it, we have a gray rectangle that represents the hypervisor, and on top of the hypervisor, we have VM1 running. So as traffic gets in and out of the VM, it goes through the hypervisor and it's there where NSX looks into it and enforces the security policies before traffic gets encapsulated into any kind of network. It doesn't matter if it's VXLAN or VLAN based. And it's because of that, because policies are enforced before traffic hits the network, that NSX can filter and control what's going on even inside the same IP subnet. Comparing to a physical environment, that would mean having the servers connected to firewall ports instead of switch ports. And again, because policies are independent on the, ki on the kind of network, it doesn't matter if it's a VLAN-based or VXLAN-based network, organizations can deploy the NSX security model without any change on their existing infrastructure. So they can keep having the same network topology, they don't need to change any IP address on any device, even not on the VMs, they don't need to change the VM location, and they don't even need to change any hardware. The fact that NSX sits on the hypervisor 
guarantees that even if a VM is compromised, an attacker cannot disable the security policies from inside the VM. Also, it provides NSX plenty of information and metadata that can be later used to define policies and which are not tied to IP addresses or subnets. And this is the key that allows NSX to align the security model with the business needs, because now you can group resources based on their function and not just on their IP subnets. So for example, you can group all of your web servers, it doesn't matter if you have one or 100, it doesn't matter if they are all on the same or different IP subnets. If tomorrow you add new 10 web servers, they will be added to the same group and again independently of their IP addressing. And the same applies to any other grouping criteria. So you can use any of the predefined ones. For example, you can group all of your Windows VMs, your Red Hat VMs, etc. You can just use your own criteria to align the security with your needs. So for example, you can group all the servers that form your application set, for example. You can group your development VMs on the one side, your production VMs on the other side, your PCI zone, whatever you need for your business, you can do it with NSX. And once you have defined these groups, you can use them in security policies. So for example, you can build policies like these ones. I don't want my application one to talk with my application two. How many servers do I have on my application one? I don't care. Which IP subnets are they? I don't care because policies are applied independently of infrastructure. If tomorrow I need to add two new servers to application one, they will be added to this group and will be protected by this very same security rule from the very first moment. I don't need to open a new rule based on IP addresses. NSX also allows to define policies based on active directory groups. So for example, I can easily filter so that only my HR users can access the HR applications. It doesn't matter how many servers do I have on the HR application, it doesn't matter the IP addresses. This is very convenient and very useful for VDI environments, for example. And we use the same approach to define rules that filter traffic from external networks to our web servers and also to define micro segmentation. All I need to do to make sure that between my web servers they only talk HTTP and HTTPS is to define this very simple rule. To, from my web servers to my web servers allow only these two protocols. And it doesn't matter if all my web servers are on the same IP subnet, on different IP subnets or a mix of, of both. NSX security is independent from infrastructure so the policies will be enforced. And you can always add solutions from your favorite security vendor to any policy defined by NSX. So for example, you can make sure that traffic between your web servers, even if it's on the same IP subnet, is analyzed by the same vendor you are using for your perimeter firewall. And finally, this is how the NSX firewall console looks like. So as you can see, you can use multiple constructs to define your rules. You can use IPv4 IP addresses, IPv6 IP addresses, vCenter containers like VM names, like clusters, like data centers, like VM NICs, you can use Active Directory Groups and many others, some of which we will see during these videos and these demos. With this, we are done with the theory part of this video, so let's move into the demo time. So the first demo we are seeing is just a very simple use case on how to group and isolate Windows VMs from Linux VMs. We won't go into much details of the NSX interface for now because we will see it later in other demos. We go directly to the service composer which is the section where we define these groups we have just seen in the theory part of this session. Here we create a new group and we call it Windows VMs and as a membership criteria we define all those VMs whose operating system names contains the word Windows. And only with that the group is created and already has two members. As we can see there is a domain controller and also a SRM related VM which is based on Windows. We now repeat the process creating a second group which we will call Linux VMs and as a membership criteria we define those VMs whose operating system name contained, contains the word Linux. Once again since the moment we hit finish the group is created and automatically has already some members. In this case 10 different VMs all of them running Linux based operating systems. And the beauty here is that we have just group VMs independently of their IP addresses. It doesn't matter if all of them are on the same IP subnets or on different IP subnets. We have just grouped them all together and also as soon as we add more Linux or more Windows VMs they will be part automatically of these groups and we don't need to modify them. 
So once we have defined our groups, we can move to the firewall tab and start using these groups in firewall rules. So first we are creating a new dedicated section because the lab has already some other rules for some other tests. In our case we call this section Linux versus Windows. And we define our first rule that will block traffic initiated from Windows VMs towards Linux VMs. As the source we will select the group we have just created, but as you can see there are many other options based on different constructs as we talked before in the theory session. So we just go to the security groups and select the Windows group we have just created. We hit OK and that's it. For the destination we do the same, but now we look for the Linux VMs security group. And finally we change the action so that we make sure that traffic is being blocked. Next we create a second rule, the same but the other way around, so now we are trying to block traffic initiated from Linux VMs towards Windows VMs. So as the source we select the Linux security group and as the destination we select the Windows security group. Again we will now modify the action so that traffic is blocked. And finally we publish the rules so that they get effectively applied. And this is all we need to do to make sure our Windows VMs don't talk with our Linux VMs. It doesn't matter how many VMs do we have on which subnets they are if it's a VLAN or VXLAN based subnet. Actually on the Linux group we have an app01 VM and a web01 VM. Let's go and check their IP addresses. So we move to the VMs tab and here we can see that the IP address of the web01 VM is 172.16.10.11 while the IP address for the app01 is 172.16.20.11 so effectively they are on two different IP subnets. For the sake of time and simplicity we won't check connectivity here and we won't check that the rules are being enforced but of course this is something we will do in detail in upcoming videos of this series. And now let's take this a step further and let's see how we can leverage the same mechanisms to group and protect all those Windows 2003 VMs that are still already in many data centers from many organizations but which are already out of support. For that I won't use my own lab, I will use part of the demo that was already shown during the last VM wall in the session NET5529, the practical path to NSX. The idea is the same, from the service composer we create a new security group, we give it a descriptive name and as a membership criteria we define those VMs whose OS name contains the words Windows Server 2003. We hit finish and from the very first moment the group is created it already has six members, in this case six Windows 2003 servers which are located in different VLANs in our data center. And once we have them grouped we can apply different security policies to them as we have seen before. So we can block all traffic, we can filter traffic and allow only specific communications, we can redirect traffic through an IPS, through a next generation firewall, anything you want you can do it with NSX. So in summary we have seen VMware is a key player in the digital era because it allows you to take security to a new level, more security with agility, simplicity and visibility as we will keep seeing not only on this video but on all other videos of this series. So many thanks for watching and please check my YouTube channel where this and all other videos will be uploaded. Thank you.